It's been over three months since I made my last high-end iMac leaks video, and while I'm still firm on some of my predictions, like there being no way that the display size will go up to 32 inches, as well as being 100% sure about the chin sticking around, I do want to admit that I've completely changed my mind on a very important aspect of the iMac the performance. As I was researching for my M1 Max Quadro Mac Pro leaks video, I came across a quote from a really old Mark Gurman article from 2020 that I completely forgot about. He said that for the next gen chip targeting MacBook Pro and iMac models, Apple is working on designs with as many as 16 power cores and four efficiency cores. Yes, that would mean up to a 20 core chip in the upcoming Apple Silicon iMac, whereas I previously thought that Apple would simply pop in the same M1 Max chip as we have in the MacBook Pros and call it good. But now that we finally have the M1 Max in our hands, I started to realize that Apple is much more likely to give us a 20 core M1 Max Duo chip option by literally combining two M1 Max dies into one package to create a monster chip, as you can see illustrated right here by Frederick Orange on Twitter. So before I get into the overwhelming evidence for this conclusion, I've got to discuss two things. First off, I gotta admit that Luke Miani was right, and second, I've gotta go through the other changes to the leaks and rumors in terms of the design and everything else. First off, the display analyst Ross Young on Twitter was basically the only source that predicted that the new MacBook Pros would get 120Hz ProMotion mini LED displays, maintaining his 100% leak accuracy rating. And less than a month ago, he tweeted out that the upcoming iMac released Releasing in the first quarter of next year will have a 27 inch mini LED display with 120Hz ProMotion technology. Now I know a lot of people were hoping for a 32 inch display and I was personally hoping for a 30 inch so 27 inches sounds a bit disappointing. But if you think about it, having mini LED technology and 120Hz ProMotion is huge. And having a 27 inch display will make it cheaper to manufacture, so I completely trust Ross on this leak. Now this also means that the chin is staying around 100% guaranteed, but the entire chassis will be smaller to give us slim bezels around the 27 inch display, similar to the size of the bezels of the 24 inch iMac. Now I ended up looking through some very old leaks and I found a golden nugget from Ming Chi Kuo from way back in March of 2020, when he said that Apple was working on six mini LED products, three of which we already have today, like the iPads and the MacBook Pros. But the curious thing is that he claimed that Apple was working on a 27 inch mini LED iMac Pro which now perfectly matches up to Ross Young's leak. But the only weird thing is the iMac Pro part. But now that I'm thinking about it, it actually makes sense if the new iMac is in fact coming with up to an M1 Max Duo chip, which would quite literally give it insane amounts of performance as I'll show you very soon. So if it becomes the iMac Pro, then my initial idea of the larger iMac having white bezels to match the 24 inch goes out the window since it's technically in a different class. And so it's gonna have black bezels for sure, as well as coming in a space gray color, which is conveniently missing as an option on the current 24 inch M1 iMac. So that perfectly matches up as well. However, I don't think that Apple is gonna create two separate 27 inch iMacs like in the past, one for prosumers and one for real professionals. I think they're literally gonna combine both of those machines into one product. So the prosumers will have less expensive options at the lower price range, but the real professionals can go all out with an M1 Max Duo chip that is worthy of the iMac Pro title. And then if you really think about it, calling this 27 inch iMac the iMac Pro will finally end the confusion between the smaller and larger iMac 
since people will know that the smaller 24 inch model is always the regular iMac and the larger one is always the iMac Pro. So with that said, here's a render by Ian Zelbo that perfectly matches up to my expectations for the design of this new upcoming iMac. Now before I get into my expectations for the pricing, performance, and how Apple will fit this M1 Max Duo chip into the chassis, I want to go through the various reasons why it makes sense for Apple to pack in a Duo chip instead of just using the same M1 Max from the MacBook Pro. But first, I want to mention that only around 27% of you guys are subscribed, so if you haven't already, click that subscribe button below to help us reach our goal of 1 million subs before the end of the year. We would greatly appreciate it. Getting back to the iMac, the Apple Tree on Twitter recently put up an article making a very good point about the future Apple Silicon iMac. The current Intel 27-inch iMac can be configured with up to 128 gigs of RAM, and there's only one way for the current Apple Silicon building blocks to achieve 128 gigs of system memory. And that is, of course, with an M1 Max Duo chip, which has double the memory blocks, as you can see in this image, giving you up to 128 gigs of unified memory. And I personally believe that this is gonna be very important because if Apple only gave us an M1 Max chip with 64 gigs of RAM, people would call it a downgrade compared to the previous Intel iMac that can go up to 128, making Apple Silicon seem inferior, at least in terms of RAM capacity, so an M1 Max Duo would totally make sense. Now getting into the second reason that various people pointed out, including the Apple Tree and Luke Miani, the current M1 Max chip isn't much faster than the highest end 5700 XT GPU in the Intel iMac, with 10.4 teflops of performance compared to 7.6. And that honestly doesn't sound like that great of an improvement, switching from Intel to Apple Silicon. So therefore, if Apple wants to blow people away with impressive performance charts like they did with the MacBook Pros, they'd likely want much more performance by giving you an M1 Max Duo chip with a 64 core GPU. But the even bigger point is when you consider the differences in raw CPU performance. The current 27 inch Intel iMac actually has two CPU options that have more CPU performance than the 10 core M1 Max, as you can see in this Cinebench R23 chart, with the i9 being 14% faster in terms of full 100% CPU workloads. So if Apple was only giving us a 10 core chip, there would literally be a downgrade going from Intel to Apple Silicon, at least in terms of raw CPU performance. And I don't think there's any way that Apple is gonna be okay with this. Apple instead wants to show off mind blowing differences compared to Intel, which the M1 Max Duo chip would achieve. And you've also gotta remember that Intel just released their Alder Lake chips, which are very important. Impressive. So Apple literally needs a 20 core M1 Max Duo in order to stay competitive. Now moving on to my fourth point, if Apple limits the iMac to just the 10 core M1 Max, then the fully loaded iMac price will be significantly lower than the current Intel iMac. So if Apple's iMac starts at $2,000 with a binned 8-core CPU and 14-core GPU, just like the base 14-inch MacBook Pro, then a maxed out M1 Max iMac with a 10-core CPU, 32-core GPU, 64 gigs of unified RAM, and an 8TB SSD will cost around $5,900. However, a current Intel iMac can be configured up to $8,200 since you have the option for 128 gigs of RAM, which is $2,300 higher than a theoretical M1 Max Apple Silicon version. So if Apple wants as much revenue potential as possible to make their sales numbers look good, they need to give us a more expensive M1 Max Duo chip option. And then finally, this next point is perhaps the most overwhelming evidence we have for a 20 core chip going into the iMac. According to Hector Martin, an engineer that is working on porting Linux to Apple Silicon Max, the IRQ controller in the M1 Pro and Max chips is very clearly engineered with a currently unused second half 
for a second die. Specifically, there's a second set of config mask software gen hardware state registers that are currently idle in the new MacBook Pros, showing evidence that Apple has already done the prep work in the latest macOS Monterey software to support a theoretical M1 Max Duo Apple Silicon chip. And Hector believes in this so strongly that he's already working on supporting this two die chip ahead of time so that Linux just boots up without issues on future two die machines. But the biggest piece of overwhelming evidence is that the current IRQ controller only has support for two dies and not four. And at this point, we're almost 100% sure that the 2022 Mac Pro will have four dies, according to Mark Gurman's reliable leaks and rumors. So what this ultimately means is that Apple is waiting for next year's version of Mac OS to build in four die support. But since we already have two die chip support in the current Mac OS Monterey release, this is overwhelming evidence for an M1 Max Duo iMac coming early next year. So with all of that said, here's how I think Apple will pull this chip off. They're simply gonna grab two M1 Max dies and package them together into one SOC package using some sort of infinity fabric to connect the two dies. And since the larger iMac is expected to be thicker than the current 24 inch iMac, I expect Apple to place this larger package behind the display and right above the chin with heat pipes leading from the dies down to the chin area, which has much more available volume for large heat sinks and fans, along with the rest of the components like the I.O. ports and the speakers. But now getting into the performance we should expect out of this new M1 Max Duo chip, I expect it to scale really well compared to the regular M1 Max, with only up to around 10% efficiency loss due to the Infinity Fabric connection between dies. So here's an updated Cinebench R23 chart with the 20-core M1 Max Duo greatly outperforming the highest end i9 in the current iMac. And then here's a chart with the maxed out 64 core M1 Max GPU showing the results in GFX Bench 5.0 Metal with basically three times higher graphics performance. And then on top of all of that, you've also got to factor in all the benefits from the unified memory architecture, which allowed the M1 Max MacBook Pro to outperform our $15,000 Mac Pro in various performance tests, even though it has less raw performance, like we showed you in our recent comparison video, which you should definitely check out. And I also want to remind you that the M1 Max Duo will come with double the memory bandwidth, so 800 gigabytes per second compared to 400. Thanks to having 64 channel memory compared to 32 on the M1 Max, as well as a maximum of 128 gigs of unified memory, which can be used as VRAM compared to 64. It'll also come with four AMX matrix multiplication coprocessors compared to two, eight Thunderbolt 4 controllers instead of four, two active 16 core neural engines instead of two, and double the amount of video encoders and decoders, including the ProRes ones, which will greatly speed up video editing performance. And now with all that said, let's get into the expected spec options and the release date. Now the base specs really depend on the price target that Apple wants to hit with the iMac. So if they wanna hit a $2,000 price target like the 14 inch MacBook Pro to appeal to the prosumers out there, then it'll likely come with a binned eight core and 14 core GPU M1 Pro chip. However, they could instead bring the base price up to maybe $2,300 with a non binned chip if they really wanted to. And then going from there, you'll of course be able to configure to the higher end M1 Max chip, but when you go to the Duo, you'll be required to upgrade to 64 gigs of RAM, and I think they might give us an option for a binned 16 core CPU M1 Max Duo chip, which is essentially two eight core dies put together with a minimum of a 48 core GPU, which is two binned 24 core GPU dies put together, and these will of course require 64 gigs of RAM. And then finally, you'll be able to upgrade to the full 20 CPU cores, the full 64 GPU cores, and the full 128 gigs of RAM, which will obviously be very expensive. 
And as far as the release date, it needs to happen at an official Apple event because this will obviously be a huge deal. And since Ross Young said it's gonna be coming in the first quarter of 2022, this points directly at an Apple March event reveal. Now, the only other question remaining is the fact that we had a very old leak about Apple creating their own custom GPU codenamed Lifuka. And one of my Twitter followers, Dr. Steve, pointed out that Lifuka translates to an island. So it could be a code name for the chopped off bottom portion of the M1 Max dies, which Apple can collect and combine together into large GPU packages to further boost GPU performance. But I honestly don't know much about this right now. I'm just leaving it open as a possibility. But there you guys go. That was my video admitting that I was wrong about the iMac not getting a better M1 Max Duo chip, which now makes more sense with all of the information that we have available today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you disagree with any of my points, go ahead and leave a comment down below, and I do wanna mention that you can check out our merch like this M1 Max SOC shirt down below, and we also got some new stickers like this Notchbook Pro design, so definitely check it out. And if you're not already subscribed, do so right now by clicking the circle above, and definitely check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.